Hello guys and welcome to a new AI dungeon video. First off, I just want to say thank you for so much support that I got from both YouTube and Reddit on my first pilot episode. Like, everyone just had so many good things to say about it and just gave me this rush of compliments and, and constructive feedback on on things it, it was no like shit posting that i encountered at all everything that was said about the video and my work there was was so so nice and comforting so i really appreciated all the support i got from you guys uh, today though i won't continue on the story just yet since my first chapter was a pilot episode I want to head a bit more into the character that I'm playing and I did a <laughs> J.R.R. Tolkien move today and wrote him a fucking shitload of lore and backstory. I were only like, my plan was just to write about his physical appearance and maybe a bit about his parents. But as I started writing, I just got so into it, and suddenly I had written like two or, two or three pages about just his his lineage and stuff. And so this could be a bit lore heavy, but I still hope you enjoy this. And yeah, let's let's get on with the video. So let's start off with Galdur's physical Started appearance. In the far northwestern mountains. Galdur is a city with an angle at the edge of is surrounded by Norwich He's about trees, 198 trees, centimeters tall, tall, for furniture, clean shaven, and great for weapons, and pale and so skin. The city of Vales is long and thin, sun, a sharp refined no silver hair color riding brownish colors. Eyes. They were thin of stature, His hair is not thin built for neither silver blonde, blonde colored or maybe you could call it ashen colored. It runs behind his ears, almost hitting his shoulders, but a couple of months short for that. He usually wields a greatsword, a thin and long one, and he used leather armor. Not too heavy armor, but still thick enough to sustain most blows. He is of medium build, neither muscular nor fat, but a bit on the skinny side. So that pretty much makes up for the physical appearance part of Galdur. So let's head into the lineage and family history. Galdur was born in the town of Boltingbrook. His father, Elmar, is a regular blacksmith in the town, specializing in axes and swords. Born to a working class family, Elmar has no significant reputation in the kingdom of Keldarn, but his weapons are made skillfully and he is a respected craftsman. Galdur's mother, on the other hand, Ishamer, is an illegitimate offspring from a noble line. Her grandfather was Gerval, the Baron of Wyrick, a barony constructed in the far northwestern mountains. The city within Wyrick Castle is surrounded by Norok's trees, tall and thick trees that's bad for furniture but great for weapons, and so the city of Wyrick is known for its timber trade something the barony has made great fortunes from. Gerwal had five children, two daughters, Gaena and Garvella, who both married highly esteemed noblemen, and three sons, Garvel II, Galen, and the last one, Garmut. The Virick house was known for their distinct hair color and strong genes. Every single family member inherited the silver hair color which had passed down for generations. Their eyes were a bright brownish color, and they were thin of stature, not built for neither war nor duels. Garl was the designated heir to the barony, and were given a strict education in administration and diplomacy. Gillen, on the other hand, lived in the shadow of his own brother, eventually leaving the family to form his own mercenary band called the Narox Legion. The last brother, Garmut, did not have any more use to the family other than being an alternative heir if Garvel II died. Since Garmut didn't have any claim on any specific lands or properties, he was given a church education, something he disliked. 
Garmut was good at sports and enjoyed jousting in sword practice, but since he was the youngest child, he was still no good to the family and was better off with serving the church. In his last years of education, at the age of 19, he met a woman called Antonella, a brunette with chestnut colored eyes. They had an affair, which resulted in a child, Isamir, the mother of Galdur. When Garwal heard about this, he forced Garmut to take his vows and serve the church as a monk. Garmut's lineage and connection to the workhouse was torn away from him, all except for his silver hair color, which would remind him every day of his forgotten past. Isimer grew up never meeting her father. She lived in a small town called Rohem for most of her childhood. Without much financial support, her mother married a man called Terid, a known pirate from the southwestern coast, a dangerous place at the time. Although Terid worked in a criminal business, he took good care of the family, and after ten years, Terid and Antonella had two more children, Tyrin and Thine, the uncle and aunt of Galdur. Galdur knows little of his mother's lineage, only that he is a distant relative of a noble line, but he never gave it much thought. Although, as a kid, when he wouldn't fall asleep at nights, Galdur daydreamed of a royal life, where he could settle down and rule over a land. When Isamir was 20, she met Almar, who was 22 at the time. They quickly fell in love and married the next year. Two years later, they had their first child, Regan. But the birth was hard and Isimir collapsed. That way, Regan was born mentally dysfunctional. He struggled with understanding the world around him and never learned to adapt to society. He was neither bullied nor hated, but always curious and never managed to differentiate between right or wrong. He never hurt a soul, but nothing made him happy either, like an empty vessel, soulless and ever seeking. He didn't even cry at birth. Since Isimir struggled in labor, she didn't manage to have another child before 8 years later, at 33. That's when she gave birth to Galdur. And when he was born, he cried like any other newborn child. Isimir said at the moment he started crying, I didn't know that seeing my child cry like this felt so comforting. Isimir kept reminding her son Galdur about this very moment and she often told him that if you cried like every other newborn child, that means that you are capable of just as much as everyone else. Galdor always reminded himself of this, and it motivated him greatly in life. Reagan and Galdor was like fire and water. They didn't have any similarities, but they were still good friends and helped each other in life, as families should. When Galdur was 7 years old and Regan was 15, Galdur played with his childhood friend called Plinkin. They ran around the fields of Boltingbrook playing knights, and suddenly Galdur slipped and hit his head on a tree trunk. The first one to notice was Regan, who ran as fast as he could over to his little brother to check on him. Everything was alright with Galdur, but the way Regan did everything he could to ensure his brother's safety was something no one in the entire village had ever expected from Regan. Galdor appreciated this. Knowing that his brother was different from others, but still cared about him was really comforting for him. Four years later, Regan visited the big city of Chaldean, the Emperor's city. Because of his mental dysfunctionality, he got in a fight with one of the royal guards, and since he couldn't differentiate between right or wrong, he punched the royal guard so hard that he broke his nose and knocked out 13 teeth. Any crime committed against the royal castle is of course strongly prohibited, so Regan was exiled from the kingdom to the far north, to serve a 30 year long sentence in the dungeons of Asgoroth Peak, a freezing wasteland with only one bastille to house all the prisoners. Galdor was never told of this, his parents never had the heart to tell him about it, so Galdor still thinks his brother is on some sort of pilgrimage, but he had almost forgotten about Regan. When Galdor was 12, he started working for a miller in Boltingbrook called Askau. Askau paid him a bit of gold if he did good work there, something he did. 
After working in the mill for three years, Gulder widened his horizons. With a bit of financial help from his parents, he used most of his earnings from the miller job to pay for a military education, in hope of someday become a royal guard. His childhood friends Plinkin and Almune went other ways in life. Plinkin started working at a tavern called the Glowing Serpent, a tavern located south from Boltingbrook, while Olmune inherited his uncle's farm. With both his friends gone, Galder disliked the military academy. All the other teenagers there was either rich upper class offspring or bullies, but Galder knew how to not grab their attention, so he started adapting to a more quiet lifestyle. After completing military academy at age 19, he went on to work as an elite guard for two years, even getting the chance to talk to an emperor himself. After two years in the elite guard, he was promoted to golden elite guard, which is the grade beneath the royal guard. It can also be compared to a royal guard recruit rank. The emperor knew his name at this point, and Galdor started making a name for himself. But after one and a half year as a golden elite guard, Galdor quit the ranks. The reason is unknown. He still had a connection to the royal family, so he started doing different tasks for them for two more years, working as a bounty hunter and a traveler, doing errands and finding criminals for payment. After the rebellion against the Emperor started, Galdor was called back to Keldin to help fight off the rebellion. The rebellionist leaders think that the Emperor has tried to work with the dark arts, and after Galdor came back to Keldin, he had to sort out this problem and find out what really had happened. And this is when he started looking for the nomadic merchants. But the only clue he had to find him was to search after Garud, a wanted man in Gahar. And so, our AI dungeon adventure began. This is tales and details of Galdar's lineage and childhood, which is not crucial in any way. They are mostly backstories and events that have affected him to some degree, but I do not plan to include many of these characters in the story. This is not leading up to any Reagan Redemption arc anytime soon, but it's lore and backstory which helps us make the world of Keldar wider, a bit more detailed, and hopefully give Galdor a lot more character. Thank you for watching. I don't know if this was interesting at all, but I... <laughs> I'd already written it, so why not record it? I had really fun working on this, though. I really enjoy world building and character developing development. Yeah. But I promise you, the next video will be the chapter 2 of the AI dungeon, where Galdor will visit Gahar and search after Garrod. Maybe we'll meet Garrod. I don't know. I haven't I haven't recorded it yet. But I'll I'll make sure to let you guys know when it's up. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed.